Microsoft bought Bethesda Softworks. Yep, we're really starting you with this. So, Microsoft, crazy Monday. I wake up, I hear Microsoft bought bought Bethesda Softworks and ZeniMax, and I was like, what? What are you talking about? They they did? Nah, no way. That that's impossible. That would be insane. And sure enough, a parse came out that yeah, Microsoft has in fact bought. But ZeniMax and Bethesda Softworks and therefore owns virtually everything. They <laughs> so in an Xbox Wire post today, uh, head of Xbox Phil Spencer, Microsoft announced that it will acquire ZeniMax Media for seven point five billion dollars, three times the two point five billion it paid for Mojang and Minecraft in twenty fourteen, and the formal purchase is expected to close in the second half. Of 2021 the deal includes any max media as a whole which means bethesda softworks bethesda games studios eyes id software zenny max online studios arcane machine guns tango game works alpha dog and roundhouse are all part of the microsoft collective portfolio in a blog post bethesda's svp global manager senior vice president p hines said we're still working on some of the games we were yesterday made by the same studios we worked on for years and those games will be published by us the move hines explains is because microsoft has access to resources that will make us a better publisher and developer yeah there's a ton of other reasons i can make but uh, i'll get to that it's unclear whether or not Bethesda will be considered part of or separate to the existing Xbox Game Studio fold. IGN asked Bethesda for clarification and the effect on its in-development games, including Starfield, intended platforms, and the time Sony exclusive exclusivity of De for Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo, but was told there would be no comment beyond the existing statements given today. However, an update did come out when it was asked about that. Uh, Phil Spencer told that Xbox does plan to honor the PS5 exclusivity commitment deals to Deathloop and Cozwire Tokyo. Future Bethesda games will be on Xbox, PC, and other consoles on a case-by-case -case basis. So, Microsoft did the biggest load of buying today. And there was a ton of talk about this. The, their legal team said this is not a monopoly. It's hard to really say would gaming be the monopoly. Like, I get it does get a, Microsoft a big advantage over it. I will admit that. But when, like, whereas uh, Microsoft does have a monopoly, I like to think that. But I'm also thinking to myself, well, it's not as monopolistic as, say, Disney that just bought everything. And now there's like, two big major studios left that are dominating the market with Disney and it's only a matter of time until Disney comes after them. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, this big piece of news that broke is now, like, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Like, if we'll see Elder Scrolls, the future Fallout games, and everything. Obsidian was then asked, as they're also owned by Microsoft, is that, hey, uh, since Bethesda now is owned by Microsoft, pretty much all but formally but so does that mean we'll get a sequel to new vegas mike uh, obsidian just said so I, I would love to see if sequel to new vegas even though our world is their spiritual successor but i'm talking about it in universe and continuity vegas story that retroactively ignores the retcons they didn't fall out for with it about how there was a secret alien bunker underneath new vegas even though that was never explained in the games and there was no establishing way of how on earth does the Brotherhood still not know this if they are in contact with them, but they never knew this, but we never were told this, and we have to look this up, and then we yada yada yada. So, <laughs> Microsoft buying things out. So, Microsoft is really go gunning for Sony this time, it seems. Not sure if this is console war planned, but uh, the thing I did say when I was talking to people about it was, please fire Todd Howard and the restructuring of the management because Todd Howard really, if really blew themselves in the foot with the Fallout 76 debacle for two years. And, and now you got this and now Sony has just lost some major players for their console and it's currently unknown if it will be and they say it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis so they can say oh well elder scrolls the new elder scrolls that could be ps5 uh but this this has to stay xbox so it's going to be interesting to see where this goes this could affect modding support this could affect a lot of things 
And it also was announced that many of Bethesda's Icon Towns will also be available on Game Pass. So look forward to that for Game Pass users as part of their growing market. And now when I and now it's like it's just absolute bonkers. It's complete bonkers that this happened. Wake up and I see this. So Microsoft and Bethesda's new relationship is in the works. Let's see how this goes out and let's see how how the game development industry will be affected by all of this. Also, in the nerd cult the culture nerd area of the world, we there was an exclusive on the 17th that says Henry Cavill signs a new Superman film de deal. Sources close to TCN and DCU News have confirmed Henry Cavill has signed a new deal to reprise his role as Superman in DC films in the future. Cavill's future as Superman as the Man of Steel has been a source of contention for quite some time. Despite Cavill's love and dedication for the role, his portrayal of the character has his fair share of criticisms, which I have talked about before in the past uh, in three separate videos, I believe. <laughs> it's been a while. And after the lackluster performance of Justice League 2017, his future as the hero was bleak, as Warner Brothers seemingly lost interest in the character. However, after the release of Snyder Cut Moon gained traction, interest in Cavill's depiction of the character has been rekindled, and the opinion made by Cavill himself has apparently sealed the deal for his return to the Red Cape. Sources close to the TCN have confirmed, the, per the information provided by Joss at DCU News, that Cavill did indeed recently help pitch a new Superman project. The information was recently discussed last week on Friday Night Livestream on for Lightcast Podcasts. The pitch was widely praised and has led to the official confirmation of his new contract for more appearances as Superman. Ours and DC, uh, the culture nerd and DCU's news source have stated that the contract includes three films for Cavill's pitch and options for future cameos and future DC films for a total of five to six movies. As of now, we do not know what the f three films specifically that deal entails, but they could be anything from another solo outing to a prominent role in Black Adam and Shazam film. Oh man, stay tuned for culture new stuff. And Boss Logic also posted an artwork below, which does seem to further build up hype that Superman's back as the Man of Steel. Oh, well, as Henry Cavill's um, agent D Danny Garcia uh, reshared it. So, yeah, the Man of Steel looks to be back. They haven't made a big formal press announcement yet, but it seems like, yep, it's happening. He's he's coming back. But, and, and like I said, like, it's going to be interesting where they take this because um, I thought Henry Cavill was an okay guy for Superman. He does look the guy. I, I, I just think the writing should have been done better. But when I look at him, I'm like, yeah, he can be a legitimate Superman if given the right right material to work with. So when I heard this, I was like, okay, so is this going to be happening after Flashpoint movie adaptation? Because it was, because Flashpoint is said to be that, that big relaunching of the DCEU project. And it's part of this whole idea that they're going to fix everything. They're going to try and reboot everything, bring about the rebirth era of DC films and everything. And Jeff Johns is at the helm, so we'll have to wait for that. But Flashpoint, having uh, Batflick back <laughs> is hypey. Angry Joe's excited, so he's happy. But uh, we'll have to see where this goes. Henry Cavill does seem to be back, and I'm, I'm looking forward to what he can do next. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if Dwayne Johnson has some role because he's playing black adam and he's had and he has the most power in hollywood right now he's possibly the most powerful man in hollywood he could easily tell warner bros hey uh can we get henry cavill back i want to work with him as the superman of that of our universe and they were like damn it we didn't want to bring him back but since you asked for him back we'll bring him back so Look forward to the potential of Henry Cavill Superman versus Dwayne The Rock Johnson's Black Adam. It's probably going to be a slob on Ocker. We need Jen Ross for commentary on the news corporations. Because that will be hell. So, in fun news, Microsoft CEO uh, Satala Nad Natalie uh, brings in Matt Chief to help throw the first pitch at a Mariners game. So they didn't, like, do anything big, like have Master Chief throw the pitch. It was more like, oh, uh, um, he just has a guy dressed up as Master Chief and a whole army of Spartans. It would have been more funny if Master Chief, you know, actually threw it, like he throws a grenade. 
and, and it would have just been hilarious but it, it, that's just a small bit of fun news i wanted to bring in because it was just funny you can see it on the seattle mariners uh twitter account you'll see it was posted at 4 2 p.m september 20th 2020 Cyberpunk 2077 dev developers reminds everyone that it's playable on PS5 and Xbox Series X. So this is more like a press release saying, yeah, it's with the reveal of the next generation of console launches, launch dates, we want to we want to remind everyone that Cyberpunk 2077 will be playable on those systems on November 19th, almost like a launch tile, right? In all but name. But I was thinking to myself when I heard this, uh, so and I'm hoping that that this is that that we get. Like I said, um, I'd be all for it. Uh, backwards compatibility, let's do it. Nostalgic cells, if done correctly. I just hope I can bring my saved data transfer files there, and therefore we can seal a deal there. Best Buy is having a new $105 edition of the Halo Infinite game that comes with a steel book and a Master Chief statue. Woo! So it's $105. Uh, it's a bundle that comes with a standard edition as well as a Steelbird case and a Master Chief PVC statue. It also includes a $10 award when you pre-order. Though the store is not yet accepting orders, the page is very sparse at the moment, so we don't know further specifics like the exact dimensions and details of the statue. Other than that, we, there's going to be a statue involved. So I, I get the feeling that... Um, so... That the idea that maybe if this is happening, if it's already being set up, could it be, could could it be a sign that this is part of the big launching for for Halo next year, um, that it might actually be coming sooner than anticipated? If there's going to be a statue and pre and a and a site and Best Buy always setting up shop for the eventual pre-orders when they launch, we'll have to see. I'm pretty excited. I've been a Halo fan from from day one i sadly never read the expanded material i only read ghost of onyx and i think that's in parts of fall of reach and then that was retconned out of existence thanks to halo reach which is a freaking awesome game so red dead online yeah so players have discovered several zombie models in the game's files all linked to the army of fear so yeah, it looks like zombies are coming. The zombies are coming. The zombies are coming. And, you know, all hell's going to break loose. It looks like it's coming this October for Halloween. And, yeah, we definitely need some spooks and scares because, well, the year's probably canceled it because 2020 sucks. And... And they had worked on this kind of stuff before, you know. Undead Nightmare. Everyone remembers that, and the insanity that ensued with that story. But, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see this and and see if it's going to stick around after October, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Also launching yesterday, last night, in the middle of the night, was uh, WandaVision, the upcoming Disney Plus exclusive that will delve into a ton of nostalgia. So, I had seen it, um, so, yeah, I, I watched the trailer twice, uh, so, the series looks to be taking inspiration from Tom King's run on Vision, which depicted the character creating a family and suburban life for himself, one that was very difficult to maintain and ultimately went to hell, and the trailer also showing Scarlet Witch's costume, and it looks like there's going to be plenty of fun nods to the old Marvel stuff, especially Vision's Marvel Universe costume in the comics. And, yeah, it does look like it's reaching to that route where, yeah, uh, Wanda is going crazy. She's going to become the Scarlet Witch that she was infamously known for to the House of M event. And it seems like she's unaware that she's manipulating reality as this show is to serve as an also tie in build to the eventual Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which does realize that, yeah, this is part of the multiverse event. So it looks like Wanda is going to break time because it's not like we have enough comic universes breaking time every single second of the day. And then you gotta remember, oh wait, we already broke time in DC. We broke time in Marvels like six times. 
And now we're doing it again for the MCU, except this is deliberate and not because management is horrible at their job. But yeah, release date has not been announced, but it does promise it's coming soon. So looking excited for that project. Uh, it, it does look like it's going to have a bit of a horror element to it. When you think, oh wait, Wanda lost her mind in House of M. And the biggest disaster that big happened was the no more mutants. And well, that happened. The event that happened there was dark and dramatic for the X-Men. But the X-Men don't exist yet in the MCU. So yeah, don't expect an iconic line like that. Like the iconic line maybe they'll bring in something to bring in multiverse stuff but yeah and people have been wanting to see dr strange's scarlet witch team up so in the mcu so that's going to be exciting so the legal expert says that microsoft uh, buying bethesda is a monopoly and this is what it was said uh let's see if i can find the quote uh a horizontal merger which is what the fox and disney fit deal was is when two competitors within the same market are combined in contrast. Contrast, the vertical manager is an example where a distributor content Xbox purchases a content producer. Vertical mergers is what is being referred to for the purpose of antitrust laws are historically less of a problem for antitrust regulate regulators. David Hope, managing partner of SF-based media tech law firm Gamma Law. With vertical integration, you can still have concerns over consumer choice and monopoly pricing, but the but those concerns are going to be much diminished because you're still going to have an independent competitors. For example, if Microsoft buys every game studio, then people won't, wouldn't want to buy a PS5, since you know that that could be a monopoly. So console exclusivity has not been an issue for either the Justice Department or any other competitors within the industry. Hope, Hopper, Hop. Also say it's an interesting coincidence that Zenimax acquisition comes after a month after a New York federal judge terminated the Paramount Rule, which is a long-standing film industry decree that prevented movie studios from holding on movies certain movie theater chains. So, yeah, that that that's a sign we we really fucked up. But um, yeah, if Microsoft bought everyone, then you would say that. But yeah, so. Yeah, they would have, so, but at the same time, it's like, if Microsoft fucked up again, and people left, then they could just do their own thing, and build up their own studios, and then we'd be right back to it, it's just there wouldn't be another big independent third-party developer, there would be a collective satellite of developers, loosely connected by their mutual hatred of oppressive creativity, so, yeah. So as part of the great streaming war that is currently waging across the net, QB uh, considers a potential sell or merger of, Je of Jeffrey Katzberg's streaming service. So Quick QB or Quick Bytes is reportedly exploring options to sell the company just six months after his launch. Per Hollywood Reporter, they're considering several offer offers options to keep the company afloat, including going public via merger, selling, or raising additional funds. THR goes on to say that while QB spokeswoman declined to comment, she did release the statement. QB has all, has successfully launched a new business and pioneered a new form of storytelling in the state of the art platform. Meg and Jeffrey are committed to continuing building the business in a way that gives the greatest experience for customers, the greatest value of shareholders, and the greatest opportunity for employees. So, yeah. So when QB when the streamer service launched. Launched in April 2020, the co-founder he said he had hoped QB would become the third generation of film narrative by combining the strengths of movies and episodic television into one cohesive force. The service launched with $2 billion in financial resources, however, the company has seen diminishing returns with 4.5 million, million initial app downloads and 1.6 million subscribers, according to THR. So, yeah, uh... Yeah, they're, they're in trouble, it seems. Uh, let's hope they can pull through because we don't want Disney conquering everything. And not like Netflix is doing so well either. They they fucked up. Big time. So, uh, I will not talk about that particular content that was made public. But I will say they canceled the show after its first season a day after they won a bunch of Emmys. What? The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. So, yeah, I heard that. I never watched it. But when I heard this, I was like, oh, well, that pissed people off because they just won an award at the Emmy. So, yeah. 
So, it was also confirmed hours after that Elder Scrolls Online will remain on PS4 after Bethesda's Microsoft acquisition. Uh, so, yeah. Elder Scrolls Online still around. It will still be produced. It will still be made for PS4 users. No idea if it's coming to PS5 uh, as part of the, you know, enhancement thing. But um, it, it was planning a free upgrade for Xbox Series X and PS5. So let's see if that will happen. And yeah, that, that's basically the gist of it on that. But yeah, still hoping Todd Howard got fired on this because he has been doing lately a terrible job ever since 76. 16 times the detail. In the Emmy Award era, Watchmen had conquered the world. And Alan Moore will still hate it. Watchmen won 11 awards. 11 awards. It won, let's see, uh, it, it won um, limited, best limited series. It won, uh, let's see list i'm looking at the list uh lead actress in a limited series of movie um it won uh let's see actress in a drama series like i did see the screenshots they posted but yeah they won a ton of awards like uh the actor who plays dr manhattan and the main character's husband yeah he won an award he like there was 11 awards they won costume design everything Hey, so Watchmen got a huge ton of Emmys, 11 of them, and I am curious to know if this would make certain people who didn't want to make any more shows be interested. Hey, you know, I could come back and do something, but probably not. He, he probably feels like, well, I produced this, this, I think I'm content with that. So, backstage update on Jeff Hardy re-signing with the WWE. So, one of the big things that was being talked about was... Jeff Hardy re-signing, even though fans wanted him out after the fiasco that was the I'm Jeff Hardy and I'm an alcoholic. Because WWE doesn't give a damn. So, it was reported that PW Insider reports that the rumors are not true. Word now is that Hardy's contract is actually two to three years in length instead of the rumored five years. Here's if you add it, uh, who had time added to his deal due to the injury related time away. Noted in his interview, part of the resign was to get back the no more words, but sadly it was said, Oh, well, you get it back when crowds come back. So, probably late next year. Gotcha. I look forward to being in front of a crowd again because I think I'm getting my old theme back from 2008 to 9 called No More Words, and it's going to be special again. Set, Jeff Hardy is set to defend his Intercontinental title against the real Intercontinental title, Sami Zayn, and the former Intercontinental champion who lost it through cheating ways, AJ Styles, in a triple threat ladder match. So that has the potential to steal the show in terms of quality. So, yeah, as part of the expansion in wrestling, AEW announces that they have signed Serena Deb. The veteran of the business began working at the... Pu Performance Center for WWE back in 2018 and, and was a major contributor to a lot of big things. But uh, when I heard this, I was thinking to myself, uh, okay, this is a big deal. They're hiring more veterans now. So they're starting to bring in a mix of old and new talent from the women's division to start bolstering it because they are in desperate need of it. And thus, I will say, we should send packages of fruit baskets to Thunder Rosa and her her Karushida for their contributions and gain the shot in the arm. Because of course. So yeah, Serena Deb, so she uh, is a veteran of the business. Let's go into her track record because while I don't know much about her, uh, we are willing to learn, we are willing to learn. She's been wrestling since 2005, Ohio Valley Wrestling, Simmer Women Athletes, WWE, Simmer Independent Circuit, all that stuff like Ring of Honor. Impact Wrestling even, and and she's won Queen of FCW, Great Great Lakes Championship Wrestling's Ladies Championship, NWA France Women's Champion, MCW U Women's Champion, Ohio Valley Wrestling Champion, ranked 16 at Best 50 Female Rest Female Single Wrestlers of PWI Female Bills in 2011, and at that time that the division in WWE sucked. 
Wrestling New Classics Women's Champion and Wrestling Championship League winner 2013. So, yeah, she is. She was released due to the widespread COVID crisis and part of the whole downsizing of sorts that was seriously botched, in my opinion, regarding WWE's handling of it. But she is now signed to AEW with her knowledge and expertise. I believe that they can inspire a new generation of talent to improve. Aside from the people that are already talented, but we're talking about the new ones. So, I'm looking forward to see what she brings to the table in terms of her knowledge and expertise. Let's move on to the NXT side of the Wednesday Night Wars. So, WWE has filed trademarks related to TakeOver. So, it's called Take Off to TakeOver. I have no idea what this is. It's part of a trademark they made on September 16th. If I had to guess that this sounds like... This kind of sounds like to me like it's part of that that you know initiative where AEW does the countdown to or road twos and they were like we got we got counter program that don't be surprised if that is what happens but it, it but it also does go to say uh, clothing name namely top shirts whatnot merchandise and entertainment services naming this show about professional wrestling entertainment shows and whatnot. So, yeah, it, it does look like it's going to be a docu-like series that focuses on building up to the idea of of uh, the TakeOver event. So, think of that what you will. Give AEW credit, NXT. I believe they would rightfully earn it. But then that would mean you have to acknowledge they exist, and you're already pissed at AJ Styles for going on Twitter and announcing and praising Frank Kazaria, but who knows. WWE has announced a new TV deal in China. IQIYI, I could be wrong on that, and that could have been an L. Sports in China have announced a new partnership that will see Raw and SmackDown air live and in Mandarin in mainland China beginning Tuesday, September 22nd. So tomorrow. But you will also see a video on demand service launch in China featuring monthly WWE pay per view events. WWE content will be available in dual Chinese and English commentaries now in HD. We are thrilled! Well, to begin an exciting new chapter for WWE in the region as we bring our unique blend of action-packed, family-friendly sports entertainment to the impressive portfolio of premium sports content. I say this as part of my continued allegiance to blood money. So yeah, China's policy has been lately noticeable, but let's not get into their little death camps. So... Paul Heyman, remember when he was fired from Raw as director? Yeah, so... Yeah, uh... So, Vince fired Paul Heyman as executive director of Raw because... Probably the same excuse he was fired from SmackDown and why Wyatt Ward was fired from his position. Because he did too much of a good job. You can't do too much of a good job in the WWE. If you do too much of a good job, then people will praise that praise them and not me, Vincent Kenny McMahon. I have to have the E on the size of Canada and China and Russia and the United States or else I will go into a massive temper tantrum with my diapers out. Oh, and cry about how my daddy went ahead and denied me my dream of being a professional wrestler and I'm using all this as a backup to go ahead and compensate for my sadness and depression and my hatred towards my father who's been dead for several decades and I am going into conspiracy nonsense. So let's move on with that. <laughs> but but I do generally believe that Vince has a hatred for his daddy and has been doing this whole thing just to get back at him who has, I must stress, has been dead. So... As NBC Universal lost Chris McCumber, who served as president of Sci-Fi and USA Network, they were that was WWE's biggest ally in the company, because well, he was the president of the Sci-Fi and USA Networks. Uh, Dave Meltzer, take it for what you will, reported on the Wrestling Observer newsletter that McCumber was known to be a, a Paul Heyman guy supporter. But I'm saying Paul Heyman guy because th that's what you are. Wasn't happy when Heyman was fired as executive director of Monday Night Raw in June this year. Heyman was replaced by Bruce Picard because everyone hates us. 
And the report also added that had been sold an idea of a tie frame of declining raw ratings in order to rebuild and create a generation of new stars, which was Heyman's big plan. However, when Heyman was like, yo, the emphasis was not again put on the older stars, because WCW logic, which did pissed off McCumber. Whether he still felt the, that way a rating somewhat stabilized is unclear. Or he... Meltzer also noted that it's too early to speculate if the exit will negatively affect WWE's relationship with the USA Network, as this replacement will likely want to retrain and promote pro wrestling. USA has emerged as the wrestling channel to many fans ha as they presently have five hours of Raw and, and NXT. At one point, it was seven with a SmackDown on there, but then Fox calls it, hey, we'll give you a billion bucks every five years if you dumb do shows on us. We don't care about content quality, even though we say we do. And the rest they say is history on that. And I'm thinking to myself, if this is part, if he was their biggest supporter and he was ultimately the kiss ass of Vince who gave everything Vince wanted, like, you want to take down TNT? You got it. You want to fight AEW? You got it. You want to cripple them? You got it. Well, I'm hoping that with his removal that this leads to NXT moving to another night. Sadly, I don't think that will be the case, but I can hope and dream, damn it. So, Cody Rhodes made headline news again with trademark applications that have been rejected and is trying to figure out why the hell this is happening. He trademarked once again for the American Dream, aka Dusty Rhodes' trademark name, because what the hell is WWE going to do with it other than nostalgic purposes and then drag it in the mud? But, um... So... The United States Postal's Trademarks Office requests for reconsideration after final action denial on July 20th of this year. Cody's lawyer Michael Dawkins responded and indi indi indicated in the response that they are bewildered and perplexed as to how the filing keeps getting rejected. The reason for the refusal was due to Cody Rhodes not providing appropriate documentation showing how the American Dream was used in entertainment services, specifically live appearances and appearances by a pro wrestler. Cody's lawyer feel like the documentation provided is sufficient, but the United States Postal, uh, Post whatever trademark office is not satisfied. Cody has repealed re the refusal and has until January 2021 to provide proper documentation to move ahead with the application. Cody has successfully trademarked the Dusty Rhodes name in the past, so Dusty Rhodes is safe, so that means that they'll probably kill the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic unless they want to pay Cody and Vince will probably burn in hell, because he will, for his actions of horrendous intent, uh, than ever, ever work with AEW, even if it's on a case-by-case -case basis. So, we'll see where that goes, but if I had to take a guess why the United States Trademark Office is denying it, it's because um, they might be being slipped a couple mil by Vince. You know, do the stuff for us. But, Vince should probably focus his money elsewhere because Andrew Yang continues his call-out on them. Andrew Yang continues his war against the WWE management and Monopoly with the latest talk on Wrestling Inc. podcast where he talks about where he talks about the Saudi Arabia incident that allegedly happened. You know, the delay flight that was being told and hinted at by performers and talent by say, I'm never going back there again or never again or alluding that something big happened, but they were told to be quiet or else. And that rumor was that the prince and Vince got into a tussle uh, overpay and the prince was and vince cut the feed on saudi arabia because you know pissing off a country that will kill a journalist is clearly the best option and vince went ahead heard about the hostage situation and instead of going over there and trying to fix the situation he just went on the nearest plane and ran off and left his troops on the field because of course that could have led to a huge international incident and pissed every nation in the world off that money and this would be a bad press image for vince but, you know, fuck logic. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this is what Andrew Yang said in regards to that incident. Well, clearly they're dealing with people who've done unspeakable, despicable, despicable things. And this is something that many American companies have to have, have had to navigate where if a foreign government does something reprehensible, what does that mean for your dealings with that government? And Yang said... That that's something that every company and every leadership team has to determine for themselves. But certainly, if I were in charge of WWE, I would not be anywhere near taking that taking money from the Saudis, given their literal dismemberment of a journalist for political reasons. So, 
He says that a lot of stuff is still unknown and a class action lawsuit is still in the courts against Doty regarding the relationship with the government and noted that and noted that uh, Yang also noted that the U.S. intelligence on what happens in Saudi Arabia is still not where many would like it to be. Yeah, there were that there was a mystery, and certainly there are a lot of unanswered questions associated with a lot of things that were coming out of that trip. And to me, unfortunately, our visibility is, is something that, of the happenings of Saudi Arabia isn't what we hoped it would be. So yeah, it's part of the continuing saga that Vince has pissed everyone off. Off uh, the third party deal was finally the thing that pushed it. Andrew Yang. Probably wouldn't have been making all these public comments on WWE, all this crap that Vince has been doing for the last several decades, if not since he bought the company from his father. I must remind you all that that's what happened, not he inherited it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, WWE bit the hand that fed them. They bit the hand. They, they went and bit the hand and kicked the horn and says, one too many times. All it took was one thing and it would have set everyone off. And when the third party deals happen, everyone went after them. Andrew Yang went after them. Carl Anderson went after them. Government agencies went after them. Politicians went after them. Wrestling who don't even work for WWE and wrestlers who do work for WWE defy the orders and disagree with them. AJ Styles continues his defiance. Paige changed her name in order to get out of the situation, and she needed that. Every donation the Sasha Banks and other wrestlers were doing to help Black Lives Matter and all that, that was being told, oh, you gotta give us money for that if you're using our name. And then they had to change their names, essentially, or WWE would tell them to shut down. Because doing charity work on their off time is apparently bad. So, yeah. Vince now has made an enemy of a politician who has ties with CNN. If Vince continues pushing and pushing and pushing, now Andrew Yang is like, watching you. Because he could just go ahead and make a call to CNN probably and say, Hey, I want to run this story about Vince and being an ethic unethical douchebag. Uh, can we run that? Okay, sure. He's a Trump supporter. We hate Trump. So... We can run that because Vince and Trump are buddies and Andrew Young even said that Vince probably now needs Trump more than ever to win the election. So, yeah, that, that's going to be a fun, fun wild time if Vince loses, if Vince, if Trump loses. And now Vince has to realize he has no political help unless he wants to pay people. So, John Morrison, his run in WWE has been, has been mixed. Okay, it sucked for a lot of parts. Like, okay, let's be honest. The reason why he was brought back was was probably because they needed him to bring back the white stuff, even though they could just have Miz be the A-lister celebrity again. But the future must be their past thing. But he did say on the Chris Van Valiant show that this, when I first left, I thought I was going to be back in a year or two. I left because I wanted to make a movie and not just in a movie, be in a movie, but I'm a film major. I went to UC Davis, University of California, Davis. That's what I studied in school. So I want, wanted to do the whole process, write, produce, star work on the action design. And when I left, I thought I was going to take a year, maybe two. Nope, that's not how movies work. In 2017, Morrison released Boone, the bounty hunter, in which he starred, wrote, and served as executive producer. He even sold his house to help finance the project and then started working on another film, which will be his directorial debut. I mean, the whole process... From coming up with the idea until the release is five years. I mean, it took a really long time. And I could probably do it a lot faster now because I could have avoided some of the pitfalls. But I always wanted to go, intended to go back to WWE. And as always, as the years went by, I kept in touch. I was never on bad terms with anyone. I remember whenever they were in LA, I visit. And I and I want to say, 2016, 2017, I had a conversation with Mark Cario and he said, we'd love to have you back. Although, if you sign again with Lucha Underground, it's probably not going to happen. And I signed again with Lucha. It wasn't a screw you WWE. It was just take the shot. It's not even a sh sure thing. It, it was just I wasn't finished with the post on Boone and I was in the midst of things. I had a lot of things going on. Lucha Underground, I liked it. I always feel like, like it's an underrated show that a lot of people missed out on and they really made me a really, really nice offer. Lucha Underground did and I took it in a nervous way because, you know, you always want to finish where you start in wrestling, especially if you start in WWE. Not anymore. John Moxley would probably say otherwise. He's... You want to finish at the highest level. I'm like, if this was 2012, maybe. 
And I always s s seen having my father running WWE. Boo! He's not being used to the fullest potential. So when I hit Vince up and Cario hit up about coming back, I was really excited when they seemed interested. I'll put it that way. Now for and now, I mean, yeah, my final run. Let me explain what a run is. I mean, I'm still like on a 17 year run from when I started. So this final run could mean five, 10, 15 years. Who knows? 17 more years. That's what I mean. Whatever happens, I like to finish out in WWE. Um, the maybe I should stay moment usually didn't come doesn't come for a year or two. When you leave, you're glad to be gone. The world's there. You can take whatever you want. You're free. Your time is your own, and it's not having a paycheck for a couple of years. Then you kind of start thinking, oh shoot, maybe I should have stayed. And that is the biggest and best. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna finish that part. It always will be. I love wrestling. I clearly never stopped. But I guess to your point, then to answer that question, I didn't feel that way. I never really did, actually, because I just felt like as far as wrestling went, there were so many opportunities, and I was having fun. Like a AAA, Lucha Underground, Impact Wrestling, Five Star Wrestling in the UK, all these little independent wrestling promotions that were actually really good. I got to wrestle for, and I'm glad I did it. I don't think that actually a lot of guys, he's from the roster came up from the independence and did that there were they were there i never was because i was from tough enough but being able to see what the crowd that is all those people hustling trying so hard wrestling in small buildings with tough crowds wrestling in small buildings with no crowds that to me as far as my wrestling experience was missing and it would have been missing if i didn't leave Morrison mentioned that earlier that he always stayed in chess and revealed when he felt time it was time to discuss to the return to the company he started out in so in season four of Lucha Undead, they set, they have some stuff in their contract where there's a tale, and that tale doesn't start until the episode starts stop airing. So I signed with Impact, and when everything was free and clear, I decided I'm a free agent again, completely free, no times anywhere. I'm going to figure out where I go. So I talked to WWE, I talked to AEW, and I had a really com good conversation with Vince, and they made a really nice offer, and I ended up taking it. So he did take he did talk to AEW. That would have been interesting, and. He did ultimately make his choice. He went to WWE. He went back. But the way they're going with his booking, maybe he should have thought that maybe he should have thought a little bit different on that. That that's just my ultimate opinion on that. It ultimately was his choice. So Vince, okay, th this is the thing that pissed me off. So the Undertaker last ride documentary that ended with Undertaker saying he was retiring. Undertaker's documentary went a little different. So, I had to send the... He said this in an interview. Oh. I had to send the last 15 minutes of the episode, The Revelation, to the chairman for approval. The Undertaker told Barstool Sports in a recent interview. Needless to say, he did not like the ending. That's why he had to put in the, the Never Say Never line back in there just to leave the door open. Vince, I one time said, "Is Vince really good person? Really a good person, or just a very goddamn good actor?" Because I keep thinking he doesn't really see Mark Calloway as Mark Calloway. I keep thinking he sees Mark Calloway as, "Oh, I could uh, drain that blood, drain all that blood until it's sucked dry." Because it just bothers me because when you see Vince crying and being emotional, it's like weird because you see that you have this perception that he's this and you can't really think this way. But then when you hear this story, when you start to realize maybe Vince isn't all that bad, maybe he's just separate, maybe he's just a little crazy, but he's not all that bad. But then Vince throws a hissy fit over a star cast appearance that Taker was supposed to do, and people admitting that they spent money just to see Undertaker there, only for Vince to risk throwing away his friendship because uh, Starcast it, it has AEW guys. Uh, AEW is clearly part of Starcast. Because, you know, Vince can't tell the freaking difference. StarCast has a deal with AEW. StarCast is its own company. But Vince doesn't care if it has AEW's name in it. Therefore, it's evil. Censor it. Destroy it. Buy it out. Burn it to the ground. And he did almost throw away his best friend, Undertaker, Mark Calloway, under the bus. Because, hey, hey uh, uh, Taker, could you, like not do that because of AEW and I have a hatred for them because they're all traitors so yeah and now when I hear that Undertaker originally ended the documentary where he wanted to end it on 
I'm done. And now he, he was told by Vance, no, 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 no. Tell them that it's never say never. You can come back. And I was like, Vance, you have to let this go. Like, what more do you need from Undertaker? Your company is in great shape. He's now just being used as a nostalgic piece for, to appease the prince in Saudi Arabia. Let him leave on, his, on the terms he managed to get. He got a cinematic match with AJ Styles. AJ Styles, I'm pretty sure you can give two fucks about because of AJ Styles' recent Twitch streams where he reveals company-sensitive information about how he hates certain things and how he praises the enemy. But I heard this, and I was like, oh, God. Vince, just let it go. Just let Taker retire. You can't just force him to keep coming back over and over and over and over and over and over for, until he's nothing but dust. And then you'll find some way to reconstitute his dust into your living being and do it over and over and over and over and over. I just want Taker to retire, live his life peacefully and be with his wife and kids. And he almost died, for God's sakes, because of Goldberg and how reckless that match was. And, and you gave Goldberg a title run. Granted, he used his charity exploits in order to exploit a championship run, but still. So, Vince, in his immoronic state, apparently forgot about Bianca Belair and Pete and Royce for WWE Raw last week. Yeah. Pete and Royce and Bianca Belair were both in line for pushes, but Vince apparently forgot them. And were like, who are these people again? How, this, this is the problem I have. I, I remember seeing a tweet where Vince didn't even know who Drew McIntyre was. Like, he heard, oh, when they were doing a trial run, they found out, hey, uh, guy that we're, call, that we're giving you a trial run on the main roster for. What's your name again? Even though we signed you and we should probably know what your name is because there's a list and we have technology on our side, but I'm a kind of a moron dumbass in this company, but, uh, you know, I'm the boss. And Drew had to explain, my name's Drew Galloway. Nope, change your name. Uh, and then Michael Hayes apparently came up with the idea of Drew McDonald. And I was like, oh my god, that, that is a career suicide idea. Drew was against it and went with McIntyre. So at least he got that. But, yeah, Vince has apparently forgotten Pete and Royce and Bi Bianca Belair exist. Oh, man, this is so stupid. So, moving on from Vince and his constant need to up the stupidity. Exazords is coming out this week. Look, woohoo! The big X-Men crossover event. And during a quick, during a fan A with, I, with AIPT comics, a fan asked about the process behind selecting the 10 sword-wielding mutants. And answered with, I'm going to be real, I just remember chanting, Storm, 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 a bunch, and pounding the table. I imagine how that meeting went. I'm sure there was a lot of nuance to the rest, but I think I just went feral and they indulged me. So the writer of X Factor, Leah Williams, said, I think Storm was given, actually, we all implica implicately understood the possible correct choice was to definitely put a sword in Storm's hand one way or another. The editor of the X books said, I am trying to think of if there were a lot of people suggested that it did end up as a Krakoan sword bearers, and I can't think of many. If it it was at our C, C2E2 summit that we made the final list, taking all the ideas and locking it into 10 swords we ended up with. I can think of one or two that I thought were going to be on there that were not, uh, but there were good reasons either for the people who ended up with or not to include some of the ones we did so we could use them otherwise. Benjamin Percy, the writer of, of Wolverine and X-Force, said, Ain't no doubt about it, bub. We had to, we had to have some Marmosa Blades in the mix, referring to the Blade Wolverine scene wielding. Jonathan Hickman re re replied with a humorous, uh, 
when we were trying when we were flying out of the O'Hare and the panic was just starting to marginally freak everyone out. I was walking to my gate and there was one of those chair met massage places, totally empty of course, and the mass massage lady was basically wearing a full blown hazmat suit. So I walked up to her and asked if the suit was to protect her or to protect me. She said it's to protect both of us, dummy. Now do you want a massage? I said yes and it was weird but solid but she asked me what I did after I paid her. I told her I was writing about a thing about stores. She told me to leave. Her last name was Pog. He is, of course, referring to Pog or Pog, one of the sword bearers of Areco. And, yeah, th th that happened. So, yeah, um, that happened. Hickman's great. So, the X of Swords creative team teases the importance of non-sword bearers. Uh, so during another during that fan Q and A, we've been we've been lying to you on covers for eighty years. Just lie back and enjoy comics. When asked, to, suggested only a limited group of characters to play key roles in events. And Jordan Wright, the X editor, said only X fan, men fantasy twenty characters fighting with swords. And asked why so many characters were left out. There were a lot of characters in this crossover, and more than just the sword bearers are important to it. Benjamin Percy said, Another thing to add is that X fans are going to get treated to a whole new host of characters who will sweep them away. The toy box is getting bigger and richer by the issue. Uh, Leah Williams agreed with Percy's statement saying, I just instinctively tried to try to 100 emoji react to what Ben said. This is a Google Drive document. And, and, and Exosaurus is scheduled to release Exosaurus Creation Number 1, releasing on September 23rd. The issue will feature a story about the return of Apocalypse's original Four Horsemen, the OG. So, yeah, it's promising to bring Apocalypse to Kakoa. And, yeah, I am excited for the amount of insanity that will rain hell. So, yeah, those were all the talks about regarding, well, regarding all, all this talk about the news this Monday and it's insane. And I'm also looking forward to Death Metal Speed Metal because Wally West is one of the main stars in it. So Wally West is awesome, despite what Dan DiDio tried to do with Heroes of Crisis. And then they had to retcon it by saying, oh, uh, uh, well, you see, uh, uh, you see, it was Eobar Thawne who did this horrible stuff and tricked Wally to do all this horrible stuff. Can we retcon the killing part and just say it was someone controlling Wally or just say Dr. Mahan did it? It wouldn't make a ton of hell more sense. So yeah, exciting stuff all around this week. I looking for I'm looking forward to this week's set of comics, and I'm also looking forward to all the big news coming out in the subsequent weeks and months. Months in the fog, especially Microsoft and, and Bethesda. Let's see how the game will react to that. Wrestling is on the way, and this was Neo Reality Collective and Neo Reality Entertainment. If you like, comment, subscribe, donate to do for more, and all. And once again, as always, peace out.